Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim along with John who's going to be helping us out more now on the Real Sports Talk in addition to the Blitz Hardcore podcast with some of these baseball videos. And we are here today to talk about Cole Hamels and his future in Philadelphia and where wh what the Phillies ultimately should do with him during this season, where he could end up in the offseason, and a lot of scenarios like that. Well, we, we will begin by uh, going over some of his numbers this year and then also talking about some of the reports that guys like Buster Olney have put out there. Hamels this season, coming off a year where last year where he's 14 and 9 at the 2.79 ERA, this season is 9 and 3 with a 3.34 ERA. He's been pretty solid, and up to the last three starts that he made, Cole Hamels was right in the Cy Young debate, and he's kind of faded a little bit bit out of that. He's 28 years old. He's left-handed, so obviously that makes him someone people are going to want to buy on the market or look into getting. Obviously, he'll be 29 by the time he actually pitches a game for his new team because he was born in December, so that's something to look at. But uh, a lot has been made here in Philly and all over the baseball world about what's going to happen to him. The Phillies have just been a mess this season. They are 31-37 and 37 now, I believe, or 36 after just losing a walk-off to the Blue Jays. Cliff Lee is still without a win this season. Part of that is his own doing, and most of that is the Phillies, uh, j just how bad they've been this season. And Cole Hamels, while he won the World Series MVP here and is a great pitcher and he's so young, chances are the Phillies aren't going to be able to re-sign him at the end of this year because Roy Halladay's making $20 million, and at this point with his health concerns, he's virtually untradeable. No, and you just don't trade Roy Halladay. That's like... You just, something you just don't do. And then Cliff Lee, who they already traded away once and then brought back, so it would be really weird to trade him, has A, no wins this season, and B, a contract that is absolutely awful. I mean, he's going to be making $25 million at the back end of that contract, and then if he pitches a certain amount of games, a, another season um, kicks in where he will make $27 million. So... He certainly did not come cheaply and would not come cheaply to a team that would look to acquire him. And if the Phillies did trade him, they'd still probably end up having to pay a decent amount of his contract. So at that point, you might say, you know what, we can just stick it with Roy Halladay, Cole, or uh, Cliff Lee. Vance Worley looks like he's going to be a f pretty solid pitcher for the future and then go from there with the back two. But, uh... A lot of people still do want to keep Cole Hamels for obvious reasons. He's just hitting his prime, unlike the other two who are probably closer to the back end of their prime holiday especially. And I understand why everyone wants to keep Cole Hamels, but in my mind you just can't do it with how bad this offense has been. But we'll address that a little bit more. Today Buster only came out in his column, which obviously you can't read if you're not an insider, but... He, uh, I read this off uh, MLB Trade Rumors. It says, Some rival executives believe that the Phillies, if they do not run off a string of victories between now and the deadline, which is July 31st, they will seriously consider offers for left-hander Cole Hamels. There are going to be a lot of teams that would be willing to pay way more than Cole Hamels is worth. And that that's one of the things that I look at not only in trades, but in the value of what Cole Hamels is actually worth. Some of these contracts we're hearing people talk about, six years, 150, seven years, 175, and I look at Cole Hamels, the guy whose lowest career year is 279, and I really wonder, yeah, he's a really, really good pitcher, but is he worth that? Probably not. So, John, what do you think about this whole deal? Like you said, there's going to be a ton of teams going after Hamels at the deadline if the Phillies make him available. If the Phillies were smart, I'd say you got to move him. Their season's almost done, it looks like. Even if so, if you look at the rotation next year, Halliday at 1, Lee 2, Worley 3, Kendrick 4, Blanton 5. That's not too bad at all. You even sign a free agent. Cole Hamels is going to be very pricey this offseason. Like you said, the numbers are going to be huge. You could probably get three or four or even five prospects for Cole Hamels at the deadline. So I think the Phillies have to pull the trigger and get younger and get some bats. Yeah, and that's the problem. The Phillies, their minor league system is so awful right now that, I mean, you, you look around this team and you say, 
Oh, well, we, you can just trade somebody and that'll make it worth it. That's kind of the precedent that Ruben Amaro set, that we can just trade a few prospects, they'll be gone. Who cares about those prospects? They, they don't have any prospects left to trade. The only one that you could even consider is Dominic Brown, who A, is now injured, and B, I think Dominic Brown, I, I still see a ton of potential in him. Even though I saw him play the other day and he looks absolutely awful, I just have a feeling that Dominic Brown's going to pan out at some point. But there's no one else for the Phillies to bring up. And they need offense so desperately. If you put $20 million plus into three pitchers, or even if you give Cole Hamels 25 and move one of the other two, you just can't continue to do that. They need offense so badly. You look around this team. The names are nice that, that you see on the payroll. Ryan Howard's not playing. He hasn't played at all this season. Second base, Chase Utley, A, is not playing. And B, Chase Utley might not even be in the MLB next year if things don't work out. That's how bad injuries have killed his career to the point that if things don't work out this season, it wouldn't shock anyone if, if Chase Utley is forced into retirement. Jimmy Rollins at shortstop. He's still a really good fielder, has his moments with the bat, but he's a far cry from the Jimmy Rollins that was winning an MVP. And let me go over the age. Howard's 32, I believe. Utley and Rollins are 33. Over at third base, Placido Polanco has been a mess with health since he's been back. He's 37. Left field, you got John Mayberry. Yeah, he's 29, but he's really not bringing anything to the table this year. You also have Lance Nix when he's healthy. Shane Victorino is another guy they could look at trading. Shane Victorino is 31, I think. And then in right field, you got Hunter Pence, who's 29. And behind the play, you got Carlos Ruiz, who's been your best player this year. He's 32 or 33 years old. Listen to all the ages of those teams. It's not like this is a team of a bunch of guys that are 27 and it's just a bump in the road season. They are so old, they need to get uh, some younger players in here. And that's why they can't re-sign Shane Victorino. And maybe you need to look at moving Cole Hamels because people can say all they want. Oh, well, Howard's going to come back. Utley's going to come back. Roy Halladay's going to come back. And all's going to be good, and we're going to make a run and win the sixth straight NL East title. That's a great thought. You know, if that actually happened, then shame on me for even thinking about this. But there is no way in hell that's going to happen. Ryan Howard, I think, has a lot left. But coming back from an Achilles injury, I think if we're being realistic, he's probably not going to be at 100% until next season. Chase Utley, as we mentioned, is essentially done. And Roy Halladay, you, you don't even know what you're getting. So this team needs offense so badly. And if you look at this starting rotation, even without Cole Hamels, Cliff Lee, Roy Halladay, and Vance Worley, compared to when I was uh, really young watching this team, we had aces like Robert Person, John Lieber, Kevin Millwood, this rotation still looks pretty good, and Kyle Kendrick is not a terrible starter. As much as people like to make it out to see him that way, compared to some of the starters I've seen here over my time watching baseball, Kyle Kendrick is not as bad as people make it out to be him. Look, even if they have the money to spend this offseason, you can't spend it on a pitcher. Look, not only is the lineup as bad as it's been this season, but the bullpen has been even worse. Roy, or Jonathan Papelbon's been a beast. Worth every cent of that contract in my mind. I know he got overpaid, but he, he's been the best closer in baseball season. Still hasn't even given up a run and a save opportunity. But other than that, everything has been an absolute mess in that bullpen. And I understand that Bastardo and Stutes threw a lot of innings last year, and it takes their arm a year to adjust to that, and they'll probably be fine next year. But you need bullpen guys. And you need the offense so badly. Shane Victorino's coming off the books. And guess who's a free agent that you could probably get for about the same price as Cole Hamels? Josh Hamilton. And if you don't get Josh Hamilton, that's fine. You can go get two or three players at least for the amount of money you're saving with Cole Hamels. Not to mention, if you trade him, you're also getting two or three more players. And that's what teams need to do. If the Phillies are going to build like a dynasty, they need to begin to make moves that are smart long term. And that's the difference between what the Phillies did and what the Texas Rangers did. The Rangers made some moves, or, or the Phillies went to two straight World Series, they kept trading prospects, and now they're basically screwed. The rain, and re-signing all their players. The Rangers let a few guys go. They let C.J. Wilson go. They let, I mean, Cliff Lee left. But they signed some guys that positioned them for the future and had some guys like Elvis Andrews come up, 
had they signed you Darvish, they put themselves in a great position for the future, unlike really what the Phillies did. Yeah, Tim, I couldn't agree anymore. The Phillies, that's been their problem basically the last five, ten years. They don't look into the future. Even when we go back to the 2008 season when they won the World Series, the reason that their two aces were Cole Hamels and not really an ace, but Jamie Moore was probably their second best pitcher. They won that World Series because of a stacked lineup and consistent batters. They don't have this this year. They just have pitchers, and when the pitchers aren't healthy, we're seeing it right now. They're just a banged up and washed up team. Yeah, and that's another thing. People that continue to say, well, the offense will just magically figure itself out. Pitching wins World Series. That is one of the most overrated things that I... You need offense. And the Phillies won a World Series with offense. And since we've had all this great pitching, nothing's worked out in the playoffs. The Texas Rangers have gone to two back-to-back -back World Series with offense. The Cardinals had two great starters l last year. And then... They had a great offense and a terrible bullpen, but a great offense makes up for a lot of things. A great offense is what brought a World Series to Philadelphia, not necessarily great pitching. That Grant, that year, they had Cole Hamels, and Brad Lidge had the best season of his career by far, 41 for 41. But offense is what's going to win them, and they need to just regroup at this point. They don't have... If you look around this team at the future in center field, there's none. Shane Victorino's gone. In left field, there's none. John Mayberry Jr. is a fourth outfielder that can play a couple days a week, bring you some pop, and can't hit a lick off of right-handed pitchers. In right field, I'm beginning to question that because Hunter Pence has really struggled this season, and he's a good player, but he's not great. And another difference between what the Phillies have and the Rangers have is it, the, some of the players that the Phillies have had over the course of their time here offensively in this run have been products of being with this great lineup because when they're all together and they were all playing great, they were all great players. But now Utley's injured. Rollins isn't as good. Howard, he hasn't been as good because he hasn't had protection in the lineup. Jason Worth left. He's not as good. If you look at what the Rangers are, Adrian Beltre has been in the top five in MVP, I think, twice. One with the Dodgers, one with the Red Sox. Then Nelson Cruz, I think, is a beast. Josh Hamilton, I think, w would succeed in pretty much any situation. They put themselves in a much better position than what the Phillies did. And I think Ruben Amaro has done a great job bringing in some of this talent. But when people say that, oh, he's the best GM in baseball. I completely disagree. I think Andrew Friedman with the Rays is the best GM in baseball because he's put a team with a under $100 million payroll in a better position than what Ruben Amaro's done with a $170 million payroll, and that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, they don't look into the future at all. Again, it's very annoying because what they do is they'll get their top prospects, trade them away, like Jerry Beck, I know Kyle Jerry Beck hasn't played out in the MLB, but everyone is so high on him. We traded him to Toronto for Roy Halladay. He's getting his second Tommy John. Um, Jerry Beck is so that that's fine with us, but we just can't keep trading all these prospects and then get washed up guys. I think at the deadline, Hamels, Blan Hamels, Blanton, Victorino, and you can even throw in Hunter Pence will be available at the trade deadline. I don't think. Uh, Hunter Pence is in the Phillies' future, and I can see him being dealt at the trade trade deadline also. We'll see with Hunter Pence, but the big one, because Hunter Pence will bring a medium return, Cole Hamels will bring the type of return that sets you up for the future, and that's what this team needs. We've said it for however long we've been going on in this video. That's the point, that this team has pretty much screwed themselves, and it's time to kind of make up for that, and you're going to have to swallow this one because... You know, it's been worth it. They've gone to five straight playoffs. Prior to that, they'd never made the playoffs in my lifetime. So, uh, this whole notion that every single kid that's been a Phillies fan has been spoiled their whole life is pretty stupid, if you ask me. But, regardless, we'll see what happens. I'm Sam East John. We'll see you guys later.